Hello and welcome everyone, it is me the Laval, also known as the Power to Duelist, back for you with another video. And I think from the slightly different setup, you can already tell we are getting into some combos this time. Uh, the deck I have in front of me is uh, the Bee Trooper deck I showcased a couple of weeks ago. Um, or I think like one or two weeks ago. It will be up here in the corner, so check that deck profile out if you want to know what I'm talking about. Um... But we'll be getting into some combos. I'll show you three basic lines that I picked out. Then I will be doing two test hands and we'll talk a bit about some turn one and maybe also turn two setups depending on the board state. But with that, I'll quickly swap over, put this all in a place and then we can get into the first combo line, which will probably be the most basic one. And with that, the first combo line we will be taking a look at is kind of the Optima. You opened Sting and Scout Buggy, which are your main combo enablers, plus a discard, um, which we'll put right down here since this is our hand that we are working with. And we will go ahead and normal summon the Sting, which will grab us a pin to hand. We can special set pin to the field. Since we do control an insect, use the pin to burn for 200. Turn uh, those two into a copy of uh, the Bee Trooper Armor Horn which will give us an additional normal summon for an insect monster. And handily enough, we have the scout buggy ready to go ahead and summon another copy of itself from the deck. This is where the discard comes in, because you will turn those two scout buggies into a copy of Pico Falena. Don't mind me forgetting that I arranged these. Uh, you will go ahead on summon trigger the Pico Falena, discarding the card you do have in hand, targeting your armor horn to equip a resonance insect to that. Um, now we get into some deviations, I guess. Um, if your discard was an insect monster, you can go ahead and trigger Pico Felena's second effect, shuffle these three back, and draw another card to kind of have more resources to work with on the follow-up. If your discard here was not an insect, um, I'd advise against that, because it takes away a lot of like your graveyard setup and also forces you to banish maybe an important piece like a Sting or a scout buggy you would really like on a follow-up turn in your graveyard. But with that small excursion out of the way, we will go ahead and commit for a big Link 4, and big he is indeed, since he is heavy B-Trooper Invincible Atlas, which, since we send a Resonance Insect from our field to the graveyard, will trigger said Resonance Insect to add a high-level Insect from our deck to our hand, which will be our first layer of interruption, a B-Trooper Sting Lancer in our hand. We will then go ahead, trigger the Armor Horn and Graveyard, banishing Pico Falena, the Resonance Insect, and I think banishing a pin here or a like kind of generic insect extender here is always a good fit. So you can go ahead do that. Trigger the Resonance effect upon uh, Resonance Insect upon being banished, dumping a Goki Pole, which will trigger and add you a copy of Salt Roller to hand. This is my preferred choice going first, as it leaves your basic uh, your like vanilla insect in the deck. Uh, to have kind of an additional piece of spot removal going second in case you need that, that you don't have to recycle that way. We'll go ahead and uh, banish that Goki Pole as well to put this Assault Roller onto the field so our Invincible Atlas contributed. So we can go ahead and summon a B-Trooper from our deck, which will be the second copy of Sting Lancer, which will add us our second interruption in the B-Trooper Counter Trap, Fly and Sting to the hand. Go ahead, commit for a final Link Summon here. Linking away these two, Armorhorn gets banished since it was revived by its own effect here. For the Seraphim Papillon, on summon will gain two counters since we use two insects for the link summon. And from here on out, we will basically just, you know, set the Fly and Sting to our Spell and Trap zone. Um, so we have that. We have our Sting Lance on hand, which is a DD Crow. And in your opponent's draw or standby phase, you can go on ahead and summon via the effect of Seraphim Papillion, summon the Sting from your graveyard, which will of course also on summon trigger and add you an Arbalest. What are we looking at? We are looking at, you know, a 3k indestructible non-targetable monster, which is already rather solid, backed up by a targeted monster negate. This can tribute another insect by quick effect to target a monster the opponent controls and negate that monster's effect. We have a DD Crow in the form of Sting Lancer that can also grab you more follow-up as this guy on summon adds another Beach Trooper spell or trap. In most cases, with the Sting Lancer you summon in your opponent's turn, you will be going ahead and grabbing the uh, Beach Trooper field spell in formation in case you don't already have it in your hand. 
And of course, we also have the Counter Trap that is able to negate and activate monster effects by our opponent once per turn. In terms of follow-up, you know, as previously mentioned, you will grab the formation, which will be able to revive a B-Trooper on your follow-up. But you also have Arbalest, which is your go-to normal summon for that following turn. As you're able to revive the Sting, Sting will grab you another extender, so you already have three bodies there to work with. And since we, you know, started this from, you know, three cards, we already also have two blank cards left in hand uh, that we can worth it, work with. These could be, you know, additional extender, either for turn one or for turn two. Um, or just, you know, staples that you uh, put into your B-Trooper deck, which I think is a fairly solid setup. And this is the bare minimum you will be working with if you go for the, I guess, main combo of the deck. But with that, I guess we move into some other lines um, that we'll be taking a look at now. And with that, we move into a slightly different and also slightly weaker combo line. You have Open Sting, Resonance Insect, and a Discard. Uh, of course, you know, taking into account that you also have two blank cards in your hand, you will go ahead, normal summon set sting, and we've seen this one before. It's a classic, add the pin, special the pin, pin burns for 200. We'll go ahead and turn those two into our armor horn here. And we'll go ahead, use the armor horn for the resonance insect summon. And now we are going into our papillon a bit earlier. Papillion on summon, of course, will gain those counters, and the Resonance Insect we just sent to the graveyard will trigger and add us a heavy, a mighty Neptune to our hand, which is about to hit the board, because we will trigger the Armor Horn, banishing the exact three insects that we have in our graveyard, summoning itself back, triggering the Resonance Insect, dumping the pole, pole effect, grab a Salt Roller, we've been here before. Um, a lot of these combos just, like, end on the same board with similar steps, and like a similar goal. Here I go for, you know, the Assault Roller before I trigger the Mighty Neptune so I can put the Goki Pole back into my deck. So I put Goki Pole, Resonance Insect, and the Sting since I want all of those three back in my deck and in rotation back in the deck to Special Summon the Mightiest of Neptunes from my hand. Link those two away. Turn those into Pico Falena, trigger the Pico Falena on Summon. Discard a card again. You know, the question here resides. Do you have a insect discard? If your discard is an insect, you can go ahead, Pico Falena shuffle here and draw an additional card to have just more resources to work with. Uh, equipping a resonance insect to the armor horn, which of course will be triggered easily by linking the Pico Falena and the armor horn away into a copy of the one and only invincible Atlas. Trigger the Resonance Insect here to add a Doomdozer, also a card that we haven't seen before in these combos. Um, Doomdozer will banish Pico Falena and the Resonance Insect in your graveyard to special summon itself. The Resonance Insect will trigger to dump a Sting to the graveyard, so you have that interruption already basically set up with a Pavilion on your field. Then you will go ahead, uh, Invincible Atlas, tribute the Doomdozer to grab yourself a Sting Lancer from the deck. And the Sting Lancer will, of course, grab you your Counter Trap. And from here on out, I think we can all agree that the last few steps are fairly easy. You will go ahead and set that Counter Trap to your field. And in your opponent's draw or standby phase, we will remove a counter from our Seraphim Papillon, revive the uh, Sting here, and go ahead and add a copy of Arbalest to our hand. We are working with one Disruption less, but I think a Counter Trap and a Targeted Monster Negate are still pretty decent considering that our follow-up game is rather strong and uh, the entire combo still works with two, possibly three blank cards still left in hand, depending on if you had those three insect for your Pico Falena shuffle at that one crucial point. The combo also works if you draw your Scout Buggy instead of uh, Sting. It's basically just any insect that you can normal summon and then basically gets you another body onto the board. Um, as you know, Sting and Scout Buggy are just the best at that. Um, I chose to go with this one. Or, you know, of course, the man himself, the Scout Buggy. Um, but I think with that, we'll move into a fairly, I guess, uncommon to um, maybe a bit different combo line that gets specifically enabled by Retaliating C in this deck. And yeah, I'll set that up again and see you guys again when I have that in front of me. 
And with that, we move into the third and final kind of example combo I'll be showcasing, opening a hand of Retaliating Sea. Any insect extender, this could be Pin, this could be Twinbow, this could be your Scale Bomber, and a discard. So we'll put those three down here. Go ahead and normal summon the Retaliating Sea, which fills a very interesting spot in this deck. Um, special Pin Burn for 200, as Retaliating Sea can not only be a hand trap, but also a combo piece, as you're about to see. We'll link those two off into the previously on top of the extra deck position, the armor horn, and uh, trigger the retaliating C to add a copy of resonance insect to our hand. We'll trigger the armor horn, and this is going to look very familiar. Normal summon set resonance insect. Link those two away into once again the seraphim papillion at this early point in the combo. We'll go ahead and trigger the freshly sent resonance insect uh, in our graveyard to add a mighty Neptune to the gray to the hand. Trigger the Armor Horn, banish all three, summon the Armor Horn, trigger the Resonance Insect, dump once more the Goki Pole, which will add an Assault Roller. I'll this time once again go ahead and banish the Goki Pole before I commit to my Mighty Neptune to put Goki Pole, Resonance Insect, and Retaliating Seed back into rotation, as those three are rather important cards that you want to have as many as possible into rotation to uh, special summon the Mighty Neptune. Uh, link away the Mighty Neptune and uh, the Assault Roller for Pico Flana, which on summon again, you know, you know the drill. We discard here and equip a Resonance Insect to our Armor Horn. If this discard once again happens to be a Insect, shout out to Scale Bomber for the best discard. Um, you can of course go ahead Pico Falena Shuffle to have an additional card to work with. But uh, from here on out, you know, we'll be going through the usual motions once more. Once more. And uh, summoning an Invincible Atlas here, the Armor Horn gets correctly banished here, and the Resonance Insect will trigger, adding a copy of uh, the Doom Dozer once more to our hand, which will go ahead and banish the Pico Falena and the Resonance Insect from our graveyard to Special Summon itself, which of course will trigger the Resonance Insect, dump a Sting, trigger Invincible Atlas, Tribute Dozer, summon Sting Lancer, Sting Lancer effect, grab Counter Trap. And from here on out, it is as simple as set counter trap, pass turn, and on your opponent's draw or standby phase, you can go ahead and trigger the papillion here, summon back sting, and grab yourself your obelisk to work with. Um, overall, another, like, I guess, fairly interesting line that gets specifically enabled by the retaliating c that is now at the bottom of not on not the c but the deck um which makes this a very interesting inclusion in all honesty and made this deck a lot more consistent for me as playing two places of a hand trap felt a bit bricky um, but this way i have a not only hand trap but also a combo piece in case i need it we are once again sitting on two disruptions but two disruptions i feel like is still a solid board especially with a big protected invincible atlas right here at the center and a lot of follow-up to work with especially considering uh, we once again worked with three cards so you still have two blanks and if you depending on if you resolve the pico flana or not you will also have a third which is kind of crazy on a follow-up turn um, which is i think the main strength of this deck just the insane amount of follow-up this deck can bring to the table and uh, just kind of overwhelm the opponent even on a turn two with some pretty bomb plays. Um, but with, with, you know, this kind of preset stuff out of the way, I think I'll show you guys two more, you know, just casual test hands and uh, talk a bit about maybe turn one and turn two setups, depending on what you draw. And with that, we'll be looking at some, I guess, you know, test hands. I'll give this deck a few more shuffles. To, you know really knock home the point that this is indeed randomized and also probably will consider showing some turn two setups um depending on you know how the opening hands go but i think let's take a look at what we are working with and this is a bummer oh boy um this will be interesting for sure um i think from here on out we can start by putting this big insect on the board which will trigger the scale bomber in our hand so we can special that. Go ahead and link those two off into a copy of B Trooper Armor Horn. This is a rather rough hand. Um, we'll go ahead, trigger the Armor Horn, summon the Dragon Bite. I just need to 
check real quick does this can summon itself yes the can summon itself on normal this was special this second copy here from the hand go ahead and link those two off into a pico for later. uh sadly we will have to part ways with this imperm here because damn that opener was something else um go ahead and grab where is he the resonance insect here to kind of equip that onto the armor horn but luckily enough we can go ahead and pico flana shuffle here put back i think uh, dragon bite big insect and the scale bomber is a very 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 good choice here to kind of get just more cards into rotation and uh, have an additional draw to work with drawn to imperm never punished um link those two away put those into an invincible atlas which will of course as you probably can already tell by now trigger the resonance insect we just sent to the graveyard um and in this case i honestly believe we do grab the classic blunder in sting lancer as there's a lot of options we still have even without it i will trigger the armor horn and graveyard banishing three insects to revive that boy go ahead and summon him back uh, trigger the resins insect we just sent here into a classic maneuver of goki power add a salt roller to hand and from here on out we will go ahead banish the goki pole especially the assault roller uh, trigger the atlas here for the assault roller go ahead and uh, summon a copy of sting lancer from the deck which will go ahead and trigger and i think i haven't seen the b trooper counter trap in the half of the deck that i've been through here grab that go ahead give this a quick two more shuffles and then finish this off by linking away the armor horn and the sting lancer for the papillion uh, this board definitely isn't as strong as like <clears throat> a board in which you open sting uh, sting for example um, but i think this still has some very decent lines and plays available to it as you are not only able to have an imperm at your disposal you also have a fly and sting you are able to Seraphim Papillon go ahead and revive an Assault Roller, which when destroyed by combat can float into a B-Trooper to add that from your deck to your hand. And also you still have the additional layer of disruption in your hand with the Sting Lancer as a DD Crow, which uh, if this hits the field can also grab you more follow-up in the form of B-Trooper Formation, which is a field spell that lets you revive a B-Trooper from your graveyard and Atlas gives you already access to your entire deck so even this isn't too shabby of a board considering that the opening hand wasn't necessarily great but i think um you know let's uh, maybe assume that for whatever reason the board got wiped um but i don't know i think for for fairness sake for the opening hand, we can definitely assume that this assault roller uh, left the field by combat which will add us a b trooper from our deck to our hand and i think from there there is a very good option in scale bomber <clears throat> as we will be having scout buggy access on the follow-up anyways uh entire bot got cleared as previously mentioned we were able to with the uh, sting lancer in hand put the seraphim papillon back into our extra deck and we will draw a card for turn here and what a card this is who boy um we can yeah first of all go ahead and fire the field spell here and um, this is a very good way to prevent onboard negation from screwing you on a follow-up turn to trigger the field spell you will take 3000 damage here, here so uh, make sure that you have enough life points for this one um but revive the invincible atlas invincible trip atlas will tribute himself to grab you a where is he where is he where is he a scout buggy from the deck go ahead and trigger that bad boy summon a friend from the deck and from here on out we can overlay these two 
and make a rank three in the form of Cicada King. This is a very nice um, way to kind of combat onboard monsters that want to interact with your combos. And the fun part about Cicada King is if you make him in attack mode, uh, after negating something, you can swap him to defense and then you are able to revive an insect from your graveyard, which is very, very lovely indeed. We haven't committed our normal summon, so we can go ahead and do that for the Retaliating Sea that we top decked for turn. Very nice. Triggered the Scale Bomb on my hand to put that bad boy onto the field as well. Go ahead and link those two off here for a copy of the Armor Horn, which of course will trigger the Retaliating Sea we just sent to the graveyard and grab us a Resonance Insect into our hand which is something that we can instantly put on the board by triggering the armor horn, summoning the resonance insect, and then we can take those two and commit for the well-known Seraphim Papillion by now with two counters on it. Um, triggering the resonance insect here, I think I, looking at my graveyard and my banished pile, will go ahead and uh, grab myself a... Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? There he is. The boy. The Doom Dozer. From here on out, we'll uh, go on ahead and uh, banish the uh, Resonance Insect. And I think the uh, Scale Bomber is also a good banish here. For the Doom Dozer can alternatively also grab Mighty Neptune here and just shuffle some of the Banished ones back into the deck, but this works just as well, I think. The Banished Resonance Insect will go ahead and trigger, uh, sending a Goki Pole from our deck to the Graveyard, the second copy that we play. This Goki Pole will, of course, add our Vanilla Insect here, which we can then go ahead and Special Summon turning those two into a Pico Falena, which we can then trigger to put some insects back into our deck. I'll probably take the uh, the Doomdozer here. I think uh, Stinglancer is also a decent pick. And then uh, maybe put the Vanilla back into the deck as well. Um, in all honesty, I think we are working here on a follow-up turn, so you may be able to get with... Oh, Drew the Vanilla. What 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 a gamer I am. Um, But we still have an Armor Horn in the grave, uh, which we can go ahead and summon by, I think, Banishing Retaliating. Here doesn't hurt us too much. Uh, the Goki Pole can also take a quick step to the side, and I think one Invincible Atlas we still have in rotation is more than enough, especially when we summon back this Armor Horn. Gets Banished. This goes to the graveyard, and uh, then we can commit for the other Invincible Atlas. So what are we working with this time? Uh, not only have we basically re-established our board, we also have an on-board negate, um, but we are also able to recycle this counter trap in the end phase. So we still have two interruptions on a follow-up. Still have a big body that can punch over some monsters for some damage. We popped a card during a pop their monster during the turn with the Goki Pose, summoning the big insect from our hand. And I think that is a fairly decent line and definitely showcases why this deck is especially powerful on the crackback. And this isn't even taking into consideration that we haven't triggered the Cicada King here, which can of course negate a monster, turn itself to defense, and then grab us any of the bugs you see in the graveyard back from there. But with that, I think I'll shuffle up once again and uh, show you maybe another test hand, even if, uh, you know, let's see how this goes. We'll, we'll look at another test hand. And with that, I am back here, shuffled up once again, you know, giving this another few shuffles just to, you know, once again, show that this is indeed a random test hand and nothing picked together. Let's see how this one treats us. Um, and with a sting at the forefront here, that is already looking rather lovely. And we're going to go ahead, normal summon that sting, use the effect here to grab a copy of Arbalest, which will be very important for combo lines like this. 
Um, since as you have seen, uh, we don't have that many extenders in hand, and the ones we do have are hard ones per turn. So we will go ahead, special summon that, pin the bullseye, use pin's effect to burn the opponent for a nice clean 200, link those two off. Then make a copy of Armor Horn in the EMZ, go ahead and trigger that Armor Horn's ability, because now we can put an Arbalest onto the board, reviving Sting for another insect body to work with which is the very nice part about arbalist you will find there is a, a few combo lines you do with two arbalists going into pico flaner here triggering the effect discarding the pin here to equip the armor horn with a resonance insect from the deck um Going further into this, I'm kind of counting the number of bugs in the grave, but four, I don't feel confident in shuffling those back, um, which is why we will just go on ahead, put these two into the Invincible Atlas, trigger the Resonance Insect upon being sent to the graveyard. And let's uh, go ahead and grab ourselves a copy of Sting Lancer to hand. And from here, we can just go Amahorn effect. We can banish a Pico Felena for that, a pin, and the resonance insect to grab back the Amahorn here. And with that, we will trigger the resonance insect. Um, and as you know, shown multiple times before, we will send the Goki Pole. And as I've mentioned, a couple of times already during the video um turn one i do like uh, going for the assault roller here as it keeps the uh, vanilla in the deck which you can use on a follow-up turn for maybe some possible removal so i do like grabbing that assault roller going into the first turn uh, i think banishing a goki pole here does sound rather good so we'll special the assault roller use the invincible atlas tributing the Assault Roller going back into the deck here for... where is he? There he is, the man of the hour, the second Sting Lancer that will on summon trigger once more to grab us the Bee Trooper Counter Trap. There it is, the Flying Sting. Grab that to the hand. And yeah, from here on out, it is pretty straightforward and very simple as uh, just make Seraphim. Once more, we will be putting those counters on the Seraphim Papillon. And from here on out, you can uh, set the counter trap and set two imperms. And you have, once you go into the opponent's standby phase, um, you could, of course, you know, just keep an Imperm in hand here to play around Mech Knights, if that is something you and your local kind of playgroup or meta game need to respect. But overall, getting that additional interruption in with the second Imperm here is rather nice, um, considering that this is a rather solid setup, um, especially considering that Sting will still grab you on summon a copy of Arbalest, which gives you... A multitude of options on the follow-up um, which um, lets you know explore those maybe we will once again you know assume you have uh, triggered this during the combo and put back this uh, Seraphim Papillon into your extra deck um, so we'll go ahead and you know clear all this and of course the Sting Lancer you summoned will grab you the field spell as mentioned which is rather lovely and from here on out you go into an empty board turn two you draw for turn a mighty neptune which is mighty useful um if i do say so myself uh, once more we can take the route of saying yes we will be firing this formation here to grab ourselves the Invincible Atlas if we have the life points for this, of course. Otherwise, those two scout buggies will definitely find themselves used for just as generic link material because we would use the Invincible Atlas tribute itself off to go ahead and summon a scout buggy from the deck, which, of course, 
Uh, he is not, you know, he, he doesn't like being alone, so he always brings a friend. And with that, we will get the second one onto the board. Can go ahead and overlay those two fellas here and proceed to make the often praised for his kind of nice, uh, nice bit of security going second, the Cicada King. Go ahead and put Arbalest onto the board here. Uh, go ahead and revive Sting here. Sting will trigger. I'll go ahead then and add a copy of... Where is he? Pin. And from here, we actually do have a line into Boral Sword. Um, special pin bound for 200. And then since we do have a lot of banished insects from the last one, we can put those three just back into our deck to put the mighty Neptune you see in my hand that I drew for the follow-up turn um, to put that boy onto the board. Uh, you can actually, if you want to, you can turn two of these into a Pico Falena beforehand just to have like maybe another card to work with. And then let's say we shuffle back the Stinglancer. Let's put back an Arbalest. And uh, what are we thinking? What are we thinking? I think the Assault Roller is also looking mighty fine to be put back into the deck. Um, once again, if you were able to trigger the Cicada King early, you wouldn't be like needing to put the uh, Mighty Neptune here onto the board which of course gives you the possibility for more plays with your Pico Falena. Um, but now you have those insects back in the deck. And with that out of the way, we can just go for a closer here in Boral Sword Dragon. Uh, Boral Sword Dragon definitely isn't uh, the most optimal choice for a game closer in this deck. Uh, you can make him, um, as, pre as, as you've seen, um, but you do need very specifically alongside Arbalest, another extender in your hand for the follow-up turn. Um, it definitely isn't as easy as, you know, going on a follow-up. Um, Arbalest, summon Sting, Sting, add pin. You can basically then just pitch, like make two into Pico Falena. And from there on out, just uh, easily go Pico Falena, discard what you drew for your follow-up turn. Um, and you could make access code with your uh, putback Seraph and Papillon uh, with a lot of attributes actually to banish. Uh, you would have Dark in the Grave to banish, you would have an Earth to banish in the Grave, and the Papillon would give you a Wind to banish. And during the course of that, since you resolved a Pico Falena, um, you can of course also, you know, um, equip a Resonance Insect, such another big body in the most cases that will be a Doom Dozer. Um, which, of course, has, you know, the handy ability of also just being another body, uh, which is very nice for these uh, kind of scenarios to, like, close out a game turn two, especially because, you know, Doom Dozer is also kind of big. But uh, I think with all that out of the way, um, let me know if you enjoyed this combo guide. Um, this definitely is a very expansive deck, and I think covering a lot of the basis for this deck is very hard. So let me know if this helped you in, you know, learning and improving your play with B-Troopers and you maybe gained some insight. But with all that out of the way, again, leave your thoughts down below and I will thank you guys very much for watching. See you guys again next time. But until then, goodbye.